So what exactly is going on in North Korea? What's behind the once powerful uncle's execution and what are its implications? Well, joining me live in the studio is Dr. Kim Byung-ju, head of KLMP Consulting and of course our regular commentator on this program. Good afternoon to you, Dr. Kim. Good afternoon. Now, what do we read into the speed and the level of publicity uh, in prosecution and execution of once the, the powerful number two of North Korea, Chang Song-tek? Mm, I think that's a very fair question because uh, I I, for one, uh, personally was not surprised by the fact that he was executed, but very much surprised by the, as you mentioned, the speed and the publicity of this case that came out early today. Uh, in terms of speed of execution, uh, speed of uh, prosecution and execution itself, uh, I think I sense, and uh, many other uh, North Korean experts uh, seem to sense, a uh, sense of uh, hurriedness in a way, uh, you know, Kim, Kim Jong-un kind of hurrying the overall process. And what that may indicate is uh, Jang Sung Tech's power base among the elites. If they had kept him alive any longer, uh, he and his close associates, I don't, we don't even know who now Kim Jong-un's close associates are, but may have felt that there is a risk. So they may have heard this one very much. And uh, as you mentioned, the openness or the publicity of it, I think it give, gives, uh, raises a lot of questions about this, what it, regarding what it means. First of all, more straightforward uh, kind of on the surface kind of answer would be that it tells us North Korea is a very much traditional society. So when a uh, young man actually acts to kill his uncle, uh, you need lots of justifications. So indeed, they, get, they came out pouring out all these details, which they don't, uh, which don't even really like match with one another and which lacks a lot of logic behind it indeed but had to came, come up with this really wordy statement about why he was guilty and deserved this kind of execution I think and uh, one additional point was it's just obvious that this was a statement of warning to other the rest of the elites about what could actually mean if one rises against the the one man rule by the Kim family itself. So I think the, the speed, as you mentioned, speed and, and the publicity of the announcement it itself uh, tells us a lot of uh, message or gives us, uh, you know, offers us a lot of points to be uh, pondered upon. Now, uh, according to that statement released uh, mm -hmm. by the Korea Central News Agency, mm -hmm. the statement of accusations against Chang Song Tik is very lengthy. Mm -hmm. It's about 2,700 words. Right. Now, uh, what should we know in the uh, what should we note in the final charges announced? First things that I noticed, as I mentioned, uh, there are a lot of points that do not seem to make really sense in terms of uh, you know logical thinking here. First of all, one of the points in the statement said that Chang Song Tik was trying to become the cabinet. Uh, prime Minister. The cabinet Prime Minister, they already have Park Bong-ju in place and Park Bong-ju is reportedly a Chang Song-baek, Chang Song uh, you know, follower in a way. And it's actually a lower position. Chang Song tae has been in, in uh, charge, officially in charge of the administration part of the party, which actually deals with all these intelligence reports and all that kind of stuff. And he was for a long time, for seven years, in charge of the personnel affair, affairs. Uh, where he actually had the power to appoint key military positions and all the elites in the North Korean society. But him becoming a, a cabinet prime minister itself is kind of like a moving toward a lower position in terms of real mm -hmm. power, the way we see it right at this point. So that's kind of like a lot of this, that's not the only point, but a lot of these points seem to really lack a logic behind it. And what it may actually uh, indicate to us is uh, uh, what the statement was saying there was that he was planning a treason there and what it seems to be telling us is that probably he was trying to uh, find an alternative to Kim Jong-un himself. That could be Kim Jong-nam, of course. And there was uh, certain communications between uh, Chang sung tae and Beijing, perhaps, with regard to Kim Jong-nam as the alternative case of kind of like uh, replacing the leadership and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that, that seems to be in behind the statement when they're talking about the, you know, toppling the leadership and going against the leadership rule and standing in or intervening the succession and all that kind of stuff. So w what I smell or what I sense is Kim Jong-nam's presence there. Not that Kim Jong-nam is a real power player, but Chang sung tae uh, using Kim Jong-nam as a, like, a political, uh, you know, like, a, you know, 
I don't know, the, the, the uh, surface of a mask of his new uh, power structure and all that. So very interesting. And additionally, if I may mention, may, may mention one of the things that seems to lack a consistency and a long-term planning in the statement itself is about Chang's, a charge against Chang Som Nam saying that he was trying to rent this land in uh, Nasan area for 50 years. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of indication in the future North Korea may actually face difficulty, even if it wants, to open their economy any further with this statement printed in, in this indictment. So uh, lack of planning in staying and offering the statement itself and lack of logic itself in pre uh, preparing this statement, meaning that this was indeed prepared in a hurry. Right, Kim Jong-nam, of course, is the older brother of uh, Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. Of course, they uh, share the same father, Kim Jong-il. However, right. they have different mothers. Right. Kim Jong-nam um, is actually the eldest son of Kim Jong-il. However, was not handpicked as a successor right. of um, Kim Jong-il. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, like you said, it, lack, it looks to be lacking preparation mm -hmm. and time. And some experts have pointed out that this could mean that um, just hint at the fact that Kim Jong-un is actually young and immature and emotional. Now, what do we see in Kim Jong-un's style of leadership uh, shown in this case? In this case here, it seems to be showing this young leader is actually insecure. Uh, you know, judging all these things that are being aired through this statement itself, he's extremely insecure and he's not really shrewd, uh, which is a big contrast against his father's style. His father's always was very careful about his words and didn't say much and all that kind of stuff. And North Korea didn't really issue all these kind of statements before. But uh, it's really wordy statement, as I mentioned before. And uh, this could actually go along with the overall observation of his uh, leadership style that we have seen so far for the last two years. He would be a person who would in, uh, invite Dennis Rodman and talk about <laughs> this Western style U.S. basketball on one hand. And then again, you know, talking about this tradition of observing the leadership in this statement and all that kind of stuff. So very uh, lack of consistency and uh, emotional in a way and whimsical, which only seem to highlight the uh, indication that, that he's uh, immature and he lacks uh, experience. So uh, what, what are the risks that we see in the future uh, process of North Korea's handling of, uh, you know, of the disclosure of this case through mm -hmm. this and uh, further consolidation of uh, political power uh, within the regime? You know, what we know, uh, the immediate uh, outcome of this action that was announced to this morning is its uh, reign of terror. Uh, it's creating a lot of fear among the North Korean elites. And what that means is, by creating fear, you don't really secure loyalty. What you, what you end up with is uh, a lot of people trying to cover their own safety and their own survival. Meaning that actually, what we need in, in North Korea is actually stability and rational thinking. But the thing is, in this kind of reign of terror, rational thinking may actually lose its ground. And this young leader, who's not even 30 in his age at this point, may actually make these kind of decisions while the more experienced and more rational brains could actually stay away from his important decisions. So indeed, uh, this actually increases a lot of risk in a way and uh, actually reduces rationality in terms of the decisions that we could expect from Pyongyang uh, coming down the road. So uh, this is an unsettling situation. And now, um, as for Seoul's preparation for, um, you know, for coming North Korea-related uncertainties, what should we note of that? Uh, you know, we, it has been already covered in our previous reports here about the, what was happening in the National Assembly and various kinds of committees and as well as Tonga there this morning with the National Security Council meeting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what we seem to be confirming is the uh, South Korean government is very, very carefully watching this situation at this point. And hopefully, I think they will be in connect, uh, close consultation with uh, powers like Beijing and Washington at this point, especially Personally, I'm sensing there has been some kind of role by Beijing being played before this thing happened in Pyongyang at this point, in conjunction with Kim Jong-nam and Chang sung tae and all that. So I, I'm waiting for Beijing's official word that could come out anytime soon. And then again, uh, even beyond those official words, uh, I think the communication and coordination with Beijing will be a critical matter that South Korean government will have to focus on. That's my personal view. All right. A lot of speculation at this point, as always, mm -hmm. um, in terms of North Korea. Right. And uh, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out and how this will impact inter-Korean relations and North Korea's policy towards the outside world. Right, that's for sure. All right, Dr. Kim Byung-ju, thank you so much for today. Mm -hmm. Thank you.